hello, Rachel, Rachel Sprunt and Cherry McKee. I am. Um, and Hi. you're from Eco Colnes and Halstead Group and the Earls Colne Community Garden. And you've got a Facebook page, the incredible edible Earls Colne. Colne. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, how would you like, would you like to tell me about how your Eco Group got started? Oh, right. Eco and Colnes and Houses. Well, it started for me um, about three years ago. I started to make changes in my household um, because I found out that I was putting all my plastic recycling out and actually most of it couldn't be recycled and I was mortified. So um, I started making changes in my household. I started with changing my milk bottles from plastic to glass. And then I was looking for inspiration of what else I could change. So I was just sitting in my car on the, on the way to the school run, well, parked up for the school run. And I thought, you know, I'm going to set up this group and ask all my friends and all my people in the community where they find their products from, their eco products, like their bamboo toothbrushes and stuff. So I set it up and it just exploded. It was incredible response to how many other people are wanting to ask the same questions and give tips and yeah, so yeah, that, that was two years ago. And, and now we're at 1.2K members and it's just grown by itself. Everything on there is what people want to do, what they, is what they want to discuss or, you know, what they want to change and ask advice. It's, it's great, it's very friendly. Yeah. Very yeah. friendly. And, and there's no eco shaming. <laughs> no, that's good. And that's, it's, this is all, is it would say that was more about recycling? It all started more about recycling in the beginning? It started with recycling. Um, it was just so many topics that were coming up. It's gradually, it was initially about plastic waste, but it has grown to so much more um, with rewilding and, you know, uh, uh, climate emergency um, and, yeah, doing everything that we can. It's just so many topics now. But it initially started off with the recycling. So Rachel, where did you come in? How did you come into it? I was part of the group. So I was someone in the community that followed it and got tips from it or looked for advice or there were people out there having a conversation that you'd sort of join into, especially like you do on any Facebook group. And Kerry said she needed an extra pair of hands and at the time I didn't have too many other commitments so agreed to be uh, come an admin on there. Um, but it's brilliant. It's grown since even I became part of the admin team on there. Um, and it, I think the real benefit is it's, it's so quick and so grassroots. You can pick up on what the community is actually talking about or what's bothering them at that moment in time. Um, it's not all about what we think. It's very open to start conversations. I think starting conversations is a really, really, really important thing. And if you can do it with like-minded people and do it easily, you're more mm. likely to be proactive and productive in, in the results or whatever it is you want to get from the end of it. Yeah. Recently, litter picking has been a really big thing for our village. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we've been able to pick up on that. Kerry was able to secure some litter pickers, some high vis vests and gloves, all the protected stuff that someone would need to go and pick the litter in the community. Um, we've collected hundreds of bags now. And that's just the members getting involved because it's something that was really bothering them, especially over lockdown. Yeah, yeah. that's really good. Yeah, we've, my husband, I did join him once and he's also done that as well around where, where I, I live in Ramson Heath. Um, yeah. But that, that's, that's, it, sound, it sounds very, um, you've got a really, really strong group here. It sounds really good. So yeah. how did the garden part come into it? The, the incredible edible Earl's Calm, was this a little bit later or around about the same time? Yeah, no, Ed, so that's probably been going, I would say, 18, 18, 20 months. Um, yeah. Mm. I was watching James Martin, on one of his cookery programmes, and there was a lady on there being interviewed, and she was talking about this community garden that she'd built up in her hometown to get people back together, social network, food for people to pick and take as they're passing. So the idea being you, you take, but you you give back as well yeah. at the same time I just thought that's fantastic so I put on to funnily enough the page the group Cherry had set up I'm just asking if anyone else would be interested and it turns out a lady within the village had already started it 
Um, she'd already been in touch with Incredible Edible. She'd already downloaded the information, registered it as a site, and was in the process of securing um, part of someone's private garden to use um, oh. as a vegetable patch. So I just joined her, basically. Um, there's probably 12 of us that are hands-on with it, and then plus people in the community will pop in and pick and ask if they can do a bit of watering or a bit of weeding or we've got wildflower beds, we've got vegetable beds, we've got fruit beds. It's a lovely thing to be part of and it's it's great to see people when they come over the fence and they start picking it themselves. Yeah and how do they give back if they're taking vegetables how do they give back? Oh we get so many donations where people are <laughs> growing themselves in their gardens and um, we get such an influx of anything see so, yeah, tomato plants or i've got okra at home at the moment i've got to take down there and we put cat mint down there and verbena down there yesterday just to encourage people to take home and put it in their back gardens you know we've planted up some mm. extra tubs um mm. with pollinating flowers on the high street um over the last couple of weeks the plants were gifted to us by um earl's cone farm uh, so in the village um their production nursery so they give us what they haven't sold that otherwise they would compost so it's putting that back to use as well so we give them out what we haven't been able to plant ourselves and yeah. let people yeah take that take that home and use it cherry do they do the ch local children get involved in this or your children do they get involved in this sort of planting do you encourage the gardening with the children yeah yeah very much so i think what what's lovely about the community garden is that it's on the main road on the not on the main road sorry it's behind a fence uh on the high street on the school run so the children can see it, and especially they love strawberries <laughs> children love to see a ripe strawberry and just you know it's it's great with the children i mean my children my youngest has been involved she helped design the beds and, and build the beds and uh, yeah they the children love to learn but they want to know what everything is as well and you know and pick it and see it grow that it's just yeah it's lovely for the children they get you know and they go home and cook it sometimes and or, or eat it straight off the bed which is lovely yeah <laughs> nice yeah and, oh. and you said, i think you said there was a lady who this was at james martin's program but he was it was a lady who started this this garden sort of project somewhere was it abroad no 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 um, it's up in and i off the top of my head, can't remember the name of it. It's up. It's up. No, it's a village or small town up to the north of England. Yeah. Um. She just came up with the idea of commuting back from London one day. Um. But it's it's trying to get the landscape change. It's trying to make the landscape more edible. It's trying to put rather than prickly bushes, trying to put fruit trees in. It's encouraging GP surgeries to have more edible plants. Not necessary for human consumption but for wildlife for insects to try and get schools more involved to try and get local businesses involved um, it is about connecting people and growing new networks of people as well as just growing what's coming up out of the ground yeah okay um so we'll go back to e um eco um which mm -hmm. is it's all part of the same thing anyway but e easy eco changes you wanted to talk about that what sort of do you advise people about how to do easy eco changes my top tip is not to panic don't feel that you've got to go and change everything in your household straight away my best advice is just to break it down start with one product you want to change do that for a few weeks or a month and see if it's sustainable for you to change that, if it's cost effective or cheaper. What, you, do you know what I mean? You can keep it up and then go to the next product. Because I think people go, oh, I've got all this plastic in my house. It's all got to go. And it doesn't. It's just a gradual thing that you can change when you're ready. Um, I started with milk bottles. Um, then I progressed to washing up liquid, doing a refills of those. So I've now got a five litre that I fill up and that... I've had one plastic bottle that is now three years old. So that's that's sustainable. And then I've changed my toothbrushes. And then and then it, you just go on to what whatever you can do. I think the most fun I have had changing is charity shops. Absolutely love them. I mean, Rachel spent ages in there. Really? <laughs> the oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. We love a charity shop. Really? Yeah. Something I've 
I have a problem. I don't, I don't have a problem with. I ha- it's just uh, I haven't got to that. I can't do it. I have to do. It. I will try. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do you know what? I bought something off the internet, and it wasn't Amazon, by the way, because I, I saw something on. <laughs> yeah, that was me. That was me a few days ago. Yeah. 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 And um, I, I took it. I took it off my page. I thought, no, I'm going to do something ethical. But then I looked at the ethical prices, and most of them are really expensive, like the ethical clothing. Mm. And the it ones is, that... and a lot it's lifestyle. Yes, yeah. it, some people as a brand sell it as a lifestyle and aim it at people that can really afford to do it. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be like that. It really, really doesn't. Yeah, just yeah. knowing where to to go and not looking at the big clothing manufacturers that are doing it ethically or. Mm. Some of them are doing amazing things. Um, you've got people recycling plastic bottles to make fabric. Scientifically, that is absolutely amazing. Yeah. But that isn't affordable when someone's saying that a jumper made of that is going to cost 280, 400 pounds. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. But it was, um, yeah. You can, you can go and you can refill your wardrobe. You, you can <laughs> go along to your local charity shops. You can support charities that need money injections more than ever after the pandemic and you i wouldn't go if you want to buy a particular color dress for a particular event but if you're in the town and you've got 10 minutes go and have a look and see what they've got in your size you will be surprised i should do i should do this yeah, it works you, so, and you, you will it changes everything it really does and the way you look at the clothes i mean fast fashion is is just an enormous subject um, with the amount of water, electricity, but also the essence core side of whether it's made uh, and all of that. Um, so charity shop's great. Just yeah. reuse it, yeah. rewear it, it's brilliant. Yeah. Maybe like, you know, like there's a page, you've got these pages. I mean, people do sell things on like a page, like um, selling oh, yeah. pages, but there should be one for recycling clothes maybe. There is. There is? There are. Oh. There are hundreds of them out there. Yeah. I don't you know. Find yeah you will if you do a little search you'll find there's local groups some of which are more of a swap or mm. i've got this so i don't use it would anybody like it and um, there's a particular site that me and my sister are really big fans of called the british or great british clothes swap so people list oh. things on there that they were happy to swap so i know i've got yeah. a pair of size 12 jeans i've put on lots of lockdown weight and now need this pair of size 14 jeans anybody able to do a swap or they're only six pounds, you know. So there are there are so many groups out there. It's just looking for them. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Or thinking about looking for them. Also, <laughs> I think people probably need encouraging with um, if if you're growing your going back to the vegetables again, the growing your own vegetables. So still, there are people who need encouragement about cooking from, you know, cooking real vegetables. Mm. I don't know how. I mean, all there is is there's programs on television and things like that but can that be encouraged as well for people to you know i mean i i i I do as much as i can i you know i'm i've been a vegetarian i sort of did a bake with aubergine courgettes and chickpeas you know and put it on the salad when it was cooked so that was good i have my good days i have my other days where i I put a packet in you know lasagna (laughs) to be made something but yeah i suppose yeah that that could be do you do encourage that sort of thing on yeah. your ed- credible edible page? Yeah, I mean, we are very fresh. aware, especially some of the children as well, if they're wandering um, past after school, people may not necessarily know what a radish, for example. Radish will grow underground, the, the tip of it will come up just as it's ready, so you get a little sort of red hump, and you've got these big leaves at the top. People wouldn't necessarily know that that was a radish until it was pulled up. So it's about labelling. It's about giving them information to take away from the garden. We had rainbow chard last year, and that's delicious, but it takes minutes to cook, and the leaves cook at a different time to the stem. So we were giving out information about taking the stalk out, cutting that, frying that separately, then blanching the leaves, and we run recipes. So when we know we've got a glut of courgettes coming up and that are about to be harvested, Facebook page will start putting up related recipes mm. for people to try at home and you'll be happy to hear Lisa most of them are vegetarian because I'm vegetarian yeah it's good <laughs> but it's also a really good way to try and encourage people just to drop 
maybe meat for a meal because I think yeah. society would probably benefit from doing that. Can I just read something, just a small paragraph um, I got from David Attenborough um, yeah. on our planet. I mean, this will show the importance of what you're doing and why more people need to do this sort of thing. So this is what I, I copied. I thought it was so important that I had to, I listened to it and wrote it down and, and put it on my Facebook page. So, so in the 1700s, we farmed 1 billion hectares. Today, we farm 5 billion hectares, the equivalent to North America, South America and Australia combined. Farmed land has been the biggest destroyer of biodiversity and lead, lead initiator of greenhouse gases. Scientists say if we keep eating as we do now, we will need to harvest more food in the next four decades than all the farmers have harvested in, in, a whole policy, in the whole Holocene. He then went on to talk about how since 2000, some Dutch farmers have been farming in a very eco-friendly way and they're talking about vertically. Um, and he eats less meat now. He doesn't, he's not completely a vegetarian, but he eats a lot less meat because he's so aware of this. So I thought I'd put that out there because, you know, I've, I think that's a big good thing to shout out about, really. And make, I don't think people are always so aware, you know, and what you're doing yeah. is an incredible thing because, you yeah. know. Yeah, we, uh, we are, especially with the wildflower beds, and the pots that we sow, it is trying to encourage more insects. It is trying to help feed the bees. It is trying to help that, like he says, biodiversity, because that's when he's talking about the um, the size of the land that's now farmed in comparison to, mm. we all probably ate a bit less, let's be honest, than a few hundred years ago than we certainly do now anyway. But where there's more land being farmed, it's because fields have been opened up which means you've lost the hedgerows, which is where the uh, biodiversity has been lost because you're losing habitat. Yeah. I've, I saw in the programme. People are doing, they're doing things to put that back. Our local yeah. farmers, they've got a whole rewilding area to That's the size of all the public footpaths. Yeah, people are aware of it and it is great because people are trying to do something about it. They're doing something about it. I saw a certain programme, I won't mention it, but on, on telly the other day and they're talking about making corridors for like more squirrels to travel. And I yeah. think, you know, it, you, sound, you sound like you're doing an amazing thing, but you could do more and it's important to yeah. do more because we, we really need it, you know. Yeah. Um, so tell me about the pitfalls of greenwashing. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh because it's, yeah. it's a particular pet hate both of ours mm. it's 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 a very hard one to explain as well it, it's some you know what is what you think is doing you're doing well and then you look into it and actually it's just these big companies telling you that they're doing a fab job when really they're, they're not and you is just looking further to what they do as a company and who they work with if you understand what that means it's marketing isn't it cherry yeah it's, it is a fantastic very way to market it's yeah. very clever it's very on trends it's very in the now to be sustainable eco-friendly and um, it's something that as a marketing person you would absolutely tap into and there are companies out there releasing huge media statements that you know our packaging is recyclable we saw one the other day it was a chain pizza box delivery company yeah. our box is now recyclable actually it sounds lovely and yes that might encourage someone to order from a you rather than b them over there but they're not recyclable in your local recycling they have to go to a specialist center mm. and there might not be a specialist center anywhere near you, you know, <laughs> it's still a pizza box with grease in it that can't go through the normal processing at certainly our our district council level so it's, mm. but they've hung on to it and they've jumped on it. The same as a big branded drink did in recent years by putting a green label, something that's easy, putting a green label on. Mm. It just encourages people to think that they're making a good choice that would safeguard or do something better for the environment. Actually, it really doesn't. It, it, it is all marketing. Mm. Um, it's all marketing ploys. It's just having the presence of mind to think a little bit deeper and ask a bit of an extra question maybe yeah mm -hmm. so there needs to be there needs to be a body who judges this and make sure they they meet the criteria that they're saying they're meeting and it, and it works amazing all around yeah. you know yeah, yeah. So it, that would involve um the government 
<laughs> yeah. It comes down to them most of the time, yep, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um okay. So one of the things you said that you you can talk about is how to get involved with and put your point of view across to parish and district councils. <laughs> I think, well. yeah, I think it's really important to get to know your local councillors. Um, as ECO has kind of evolved from the start, that is something I didn't know anything about. Um, didn't know who the councillors were, the parish councillors or the district councillors. Now um, we have, yeah, we. it's really so important. Get to know your councillors, email them, talk to them, meet up with them, you know, they're there for, for us, uh, you know, they work for us, basically, so get to know them, they want to know, most of them want to get to know the community anyway, and get involved, um, yeah, so, I mean, we, we talk to our district council, Braintree now, We they often share on our page, and we talk to them, I was on the Braintree district council climate emergency working group as well, I got invited to that to help plan and talk through all of that, um, which was really an eye opener because I, I didn't know <laughs> so many things to learn. Um, yeah, but yeah, get to know your counsellors, it's really yeah. important. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. And it's something Cherry's taught me, she's taught me two things about contacting and getting your local counsellors involved. One, I could never work out why my MP never responded to my emails. It's because I wasn't putting my contact details at the bottom of the email. They don't. They didn't know I was in their constituency. They will ignore that email. And the second one, if you invite them to an event, they have to go. Yeah. All right. Oh. Yeah. You invite your MP. They, you know, they have to reply to you, and they have to do that. Yeah. They have to. Have oh. to. It's an invitation to someone that stands for you that has been voted to be your representative. They need to answer to you. Yeah. yeah. They're not. They're not superheroes up here. And they're accountable and they're in that position because people have, have put their, their vote, they've put their yeah. cross in their box. They they have got a job to do and that is to represent you. Have you had an MP come to one of your events to do with this at all? Yeah, we had our very first, because we do a monthly coffee meeting, uh, which just started back up after, you know, now the pandemic has started to slow, slow down a bit. Um, our very first meeting, uh, we had our MP James Cleverly come along um yeah he was very polite um he he listened to what we're saying and yeah um I haven't seen him since but I've not invited him since so yeah. you know it's something we will you know we do talk to him um but obviously with the pandemic he's been a little bit yeah. busy in other and, areas yeah. <laughs> and we have our district getting our district councillors involved as yeah. well yeah we're very yeah. we we've just lost our independent candidate to um uh, uh local that's been in the village for quite a while so we hope he'll pick up where she's got where she's unfortunately you know lost lost her, her position mm. but she's still involved and yeah she's, you know, she's still involved and she's still rallying and it is still behind the ethos of the groups yeah we just hope yeah. that he will be too when he gets his invitation to join us yeah <laughs> Did you want to talk a little bit about yourselves? I mean, you, you've sent things to me, but I'm not going to read that out. It's just, you know, whatever you want to say for other people to hear. Um, so, I mean, Rachel, you 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 were a director. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to say a little bit? Yeah. What you want to say? Yeah, no, it's fine. So I was in a uh, company director, uh, set up the company uh, with the other directors. Uh, what are we now? To 2021. So it's set up in 2010. It's a property company and part exchange i oversaw operations um the sales um the facilities i had a pickup with my health a couple of years ago i was diagnosed with cancer and i am two years in remission we had it all clear um a few weeks ago from from the last of the scans oh, but it, it made me yeah great news but it made me really take stock and realize that i didn't have to keep chasing or keep you know I was working from nine till half six and yeah. not spending quality time with family not spending quality time with my son constantly in you know after school clubs or not being there for things or get my mum to cover things and it was just a big shock that made me take stock and I went through um a process of 
uh, counselling because I was struggling to deal with a diagnosis mm. and that helped me put everything into focus and really made me think about what a different somewhat a, a person and individual can make to somebody else mm. so um I resigned I don't work now I'm a full-time student I'm studying psychology and counselling with the Open University I've got an interview on Monday with uh, the local institute to uh, do the last course that I need to do to be able to practice as a counsellor and that's where part of my life will go in the future uh, to yeah. try and help someone else the way that my counsellor helped me and then to fulfil my eco dreams and that side of ambition Terry and I are working on a project at the moment to try and bring refillable shopping so package free shopping into our community so right. we're branded we've got yep. that stuff sorted Perfecting. we've got the pliers <laughs> being lined up we're just sorting out the premises at the moment oh wow mm, yeah awesome. very excited yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 and also did with having cats it did make you think about what you're using to wash your clothes with and you know all the, all the chemicals and all that sort of thing well, I kind of was already, I've always been quite aware, if I'm yeah. honest. Um, we've got plants running through our family. We lost my dad at 51. We lost my nan at 51. And I think I've always been aware. Like I don't, Terry knows it, I don't use fabric conditioner on my clothes. I don't agree with putting something else in that doesn't need to be there. I agree with using detergent because it needs to be cleaned. Um, but I think, I didn't overthink anything. Yeah. Um, I know certainly there's ladies and there's gentlemen that I met along my way that, very much turned to clean living and cutting down on this and cutting down on that and I think it's a really fine line between enjoying yourself yeah. living a normal life and then yeah. becoming really worried with something else that you can't control because unfortunately personally I believe you're either going to get cancer or you're not going to get it and one in two of us uh, they tell us the statistics tell us we'll have it in our lifetimes anyway and I think the damage done from the environment and putting things into our system and plastics that are within our bodies that damage is done a long time ago we can yeah. stop that happening yeah. for future generations we can make decisions and try and do things better in the future for my age range and unfortunately for my son's age range I don't think that's going to change yeah wow. mm. how about mm. you Cherry you're you're a carpenter Yes, that's right. I mean, um, well, yeah, I've been a um, carpenter for since I left school, which is many years ago. Um, so in 1993, I decided to go to Culture Institute and study um, carpentry. So I got my MVQ level two and three. Um, yeah, so it's me and my father and my husband as well. We work for my dad's company in Coggleshaw. Um, yeah, so I was a hands-on carpenter for many years, made staircases and hanged doors. Um, yeah, one of the first in the Culture Institute actually to get the MPQ, so I was very proud of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and now I have three children, so I stopped when I fell pregnant I, with my eldest, who's now 18. I um, came off the tools and then went into the office. Um, yep, three children, um, keep me busy. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah so mainly office based at the moment um so carpentry has been all of my life totally and then eco came along and um has changed my life completely really it has i've met some incredible people um now it's, it's amazing when you start networking and i love it talking to other people and getting to know people and yeah it's completely changed me as a person over the last few years with eco and um yeah very much looking forward to having starting the venture with Rachel it's so exciting and yeah. yes <laughs> oh, <laughs> can't wait to get it yeah. <laughs> well I've, I've done it the more, I've done it a different way than most people do they introduce the person first then they talk about the subject I think it's quite I quite like the way that turned out though I think people have warmed up to you with what you have to say, and then they want to know a bit more about you. So there you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, the refinery sounds exciting. And uh, what's any more other plans for the future? Any more plans? I mean, with with our project that we're starting, that hopefully will be September time. But I would love to set Eco up a bit better. I mean, Eco 
is a massive network. You have Eco Essex, which is our kind of like our mother group. And then there is all other little eco, you've got Eco Culture Star, you've got Eco Rochford. I mean, there's loads, Whitham, Chelmsford, um, South End. So that everybody's setting up these little networks. I mean, I would love to get some more eco groups around here. Um, oh gosh, Eco Braintree, that'd be amazing. Um, so it's a specific to yeah. the community that you're working in because they are at lower ground level run by the people, you know, you're literally your next door neighbor. Yeah it tucks into what is a concern in the community at that time that's why there's so many groups but there's so much guidance out there for people. even if there isn't an eco group in your area go to eco essex message sam she will help you she'll put yeah. you on the right path and set the group up yourself start the conversation yeah. in your own community if there isn't one already that's great yeah, yeah. i'll be talking to her and um some of, one, yeah. one of her colleagues in a couple of weeks time so oh, lovely yeah yeah it's an amazing support group it really is and it, it, yeah and it's once you get in and, and you get involved and you learn so much it is incredible what's going on really and but you know as as an individual you can make changes and it can help you know even the small but you know we can work up and start from the bottom push up you know make our voices heard that we're not happy with how things are yeah. with our councillors and with our MPs you know shout make a noise yeah definitely <laughs> you know it's and it's yeah. been lovely speaking to you. Is there anything else you want to talk Thank about? You. Anything else you want to add? I don't know. I, is there anything? No, I think we've picked the list that we were talking okay. about beforehand. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. It's uh, been lovely. Thank you. Okay. Bye. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Bye. Bye.